Thank you for very much, uh, Bonapies, the chairman of the Parliamentary Budget Committee, the chairperson of the Commission on Revenue Allocation, sector chairpersons who are here, permanent secretaries, county officers, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first begin by saying it is a pleasure to be here with you this morning as we launch the 2012 MTF Budget Public Sector Hearings. To embark on the finalization of the budget before it is submitted to Parliament by the end of April, I wish to share with you the importance of the 2012-2013 MTF budget. First, indeed, it is a budget that will mark the end of the implementation of the first phase of the Kenya Vision 2030 and usher in the second phase. Second, it will facilitate the first general elections under the new Constitution of Kenya 2010. And third, and perhaps more importantly, it will lay the foundation for fiscal decentralization. In this regard, I wish from the onset to emphasize our commitment of the Treasury to ensuring that the 2012-2013 MTEF budget upholds the spirit and indeed the letter of the Constitution, while at the same time ensuring that we safeguard macroeconomic stability. Ladies and gentlemen, as we focus our discussions over the next three days on the sector budget proposals for the 2012-13 MTEF, it is important that we premise them on the current performance of the economy. With regard again to the expenditure side, we have experienced demand for additional spending pressures, one, to accelerate the implementation of our new constitution, secondly, to deal with security operations, especially with regard to Somalia, also, additional pressures that have been placed by salary demands by teachers, doctors, and other public servants, and also servicing increased external debt. Confront these challenges. While maintaining a sound fiscal framework, the government did recently announce wide-ranging measures to rationalize expenditure and to cut back on non-essential services. These austerity measures seek to achieve, amongst other things, the following in the medium term. To bring down our budget deficit from 6.1% of GDP in 2011-12 to 5.1% of GDP by 2014-15. Second, to reduce inflation from 19.7% in November of 2011 to 5% by 2014-15, and also to increase the gross foreign reserves to more than four months of import cover for goods and services. Ladies and gentlemen, it's important for me to say that despite the shocks, the economic performance did remain strong in 2011, and with the measures that we have instituted, we expect that some of the gains arising from the strengthening of the shilling for products that rely heavily on imports will be passed over to the public by reduced related costs. We are also optimistic that the economy will remain resilient and that real GDP growth in 2012 will be above 5% with most of this coming from expansion in agriculture, tourism, exports, and particularly tapping into the expanded market in this region. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, this is a milestone budget in the fact that it will be the first that we will fully implement on the basis of the new constitution. Secondly, it is also another milestone in that as the, commission, uh, the chairperson of the Commission on Revenue Allocation has stated, half the budget 
will be prepared on the basis of your constitution, while the second half of the budget is expected to be implemented after the next general election, and on the basis of the new constitution with specific emphasis to decentralization. If we actually take into account the spend on energy over the last two years, combined it is almost double what has been spent in this country since independence. And I think this is a clear recognition that without adequate energy resources, this country cannot be competitive. And mine really is a plea that we can continue with this particular agenda in order to be able to deal with our new problems of reducing not just energy costs in our own country, but also creating job opportunities. But indeed, as I say that, we must also reflect that our ability to also be competitive is not just a factor of spend, it is also a factor of our own political uh, outlook as a country. You have mentioned, for example, the issue of coal. We all know that this country does indeed have vast quantities of coal that can be quickly tapped into to reduce our energy costs as well as increasing the amount of energy available. And that is something and a fact that is well known. Our own inability to exploit these resources is more a factor of domestic petty politics amongst councillors and politicians and others. That is what slows us down. We also know we have a major port, but again, politics or negative ethnicity are used again to derail our own ability to achieve better and greater efficiencies. So I think these are also issues that as we talk about revenue generation, how we share revenue, how we spend or expend that revenue in various parts of the country, I think we also need to focus ourselves on our own political agenda and to ask ourselves whether this country is going to develop by myopic political ideologies and thoughts or whether we all are here in this room to work for 40 million Kenyans and for the benefit of 40 million Kenyans and to ensure that those 40 million Kenyans live in a country and in a nation that is prosperous, that is food secure and that has health and equal opportunities uh, for all. So when Treasury says that public resources need to be accounted for, when we go out and we say that we need a strong public financial management bill, that does not mean that Treasury seeks to control the ability of counties to make decisions. All it means is that as those decisions are made, they must be made in a transparent and finally an accountable manner. So I believe, ladies and gentlemen, without much ado, I wish you good deliberations. I look forward to receiving the outcomes of those deliberations. And I want to assure you on behalf of the Treasury and the government that whatever input is made out of this conference and going forward will indeed be incorporated and be part of our budget going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to declare the public sector hearings for the year 2012 officially opened, and also to take this opportunity as well to launch the first edition of the program-based budgeting manual. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.